We're going to be able to heat and cool your building, and the solution starts down here. We've got a great local HVAC contractor that's going to give us a hand. And down here, we're going to install a ductless heat pump. Now, a ductless heat pump, we've used them before. They're perfect for places like this, wide open spaces, bonus rooms, or even places that are difficult to get to. Now, the basic principle of these units is like any air conditioner. We're actually not making cold. We're gathering heat from inside the building and transferring or dumping it to outside. All right. There's a refrigerant that runs between this indoor wall-mounted unit and an outdoor condenser. The refrigerant is very cold, so it absorbs heat that's in the room and transfers it outside, where it's released into the atmosphere. The refrigerant is recharged and is sent back into the building cold to capture more heat. But these units can also take the same process and work in reverse during the cooler months, capturing heat that's in the environment outside and transferring it to the inside to condition the space. That sounds great, but is this system going to be able to keep up with these cold New England winters? You know, people don't realize that even when it's really, really cold outside, there's still heat to be had outside. There's heat actually in a block of ice. Hmm. The big breakthrough for us is this technology called an inverter. An inverter allows us to capture that small amount of heat that's outside, even when it's down about five degrees, take that heat, now move it inside the building, multiply its output, and condition the space. It's much more efficient to actually move heat than to make it. Oh, that sounds great. The idea of a heat pump is not new. They've been in play in the southern states for many years. But they can usually only find heat if the outdoor temperature is above 30 degrees Fahrenheit. But with a cold weather heat pump, there's an efficient solution even in a harsh climate like this. So all your heating and cooling is going to be provided by this single outdoor condensing unit. And even though you have multiple zones inside, there's only one box outside. Okay. Now, they've also, because it has to heat in the winter, they've mounted it on a stand to get it up above the snow line so it can operate even when snow has fallen. Refrigeration line sets are pretty straightforward. One set of larger lines from the unit to inside so you can see how easy it is to retrofit into the building. And we're done. We're either going to be finding heat outside in the winter and dumping it to inside, or in the summer we find heat inside and we dump it to outside. Okay. I love everything that you've said so far, but does that mean I'm going to have to have a single wall-mounted unit in every single room? I thought you were going to ask me that. No. Homeowners would like every room to be perfectly comfortable, summer or winter. But the big challenge for me is that no one wants to see our work. Ideally, it would all be hidden or at least low profile. Above us here in the first floor, we have a wide open attic which gives us all kinds of opportunities to put in an air handler like this. This is actually a ducted, ductless air handler. What is that? <laughs> well, you know the unit downstairs, that's ductless. Yes. All the same technologies in this, but now we're going to have ducts attached to the backside. Return air is going to come here, supply is going to come out here, and there's a coil right here that's going to either heat or cool. And we looked at this building, we could put a single unit up here, maybe two. But actually, we looked at the building and actually going to break it into a quadrant to give you four different air handlers on this top floor. The reason we did it is because we can. The refrigeration is so straightforward and easy. From your outdoor condensing unit, we're going to have one set of larger size refrigerant line sets like this that's going to take heat in or out of the building. Okay. Then we come to this branch box right here. And this is really like an electrician circuit panel. Now we can go up to five indoor units like this with small refrigerant line sets. So this is all we have to fish to the air handlers. When we're done, you're going to end up with four zones on this floor, each with their own control, efficient heating and cooling, filtration, and dehumidification. That sound good? Wow, that sounds great. All right, let's see how they're doing. All right. Before the installation began, we ran a heat load calculation to ensure that we were sizing our system correctly. The air handlers get mounted to the roof rafters for easy servicing. Each of our air handlers needs a few connections. Refrigerant lines to each air handler, a drain line to remove the water, also known as condensate, a supply duct to bring conditioned air to the living space, and a return duct to bring our air back to be heated or cooled. The only thing you'll see in the room is a few registers in the ceiling. A single return, which is 12 inches by 12 inches, and a few 8 by 8 supplies. All right, so all the installation is done. You've got an air handler above your master right here, another one over the two boys' bedrooms right there, one more over the living room, and one here in the kitchen, each one with their own thermostat, so you can set any temperature you want up or down. Are those programmable? They are programmable. That means you even save more money, and the nice thing is they're wireless, so they're easy to install. Great. So now, with all this in place, you now have an inverter system, four zones, Right? And even on a five-degree day outside, you should have plenty of heat to heat this building.
But what's really nice is that each air handler, for good measure, has an electrical element that's good for backup and for boost. Wow, that's great. All right. Well, I hope you and your wife and your kids have many years of comfort both summer and winter. Thank you. I can't wait to see All the right, cost savings. Friend.